Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Swords and Unruh and we are going to be talking about academic self-efficacy yet again. Today we're going to talk about it in the context of how to take a regular exam. All right, why do I differentiate regular exams versus standardized exams? The reason why is because standardized exams are often done by Scantron. So if your regular exams are entirely multiple choice exams, then the procedure put out that I laid out, I should say put out, hmm, laid out in the midst of the standardized exam video should work beautifully for any multiple choice exam. If you have to do it all by Scantron, then that's going to work for multiple choice exams as well. What I'm talking about here is I'm talking about if you have exams that have different components, so they have multiple choice, they have short answer, they have essays, those kinds of exams you have to approach differently. And so because of that, we need to talk a little bit about it. All right, let's talk about exams if you have, for instance, short answer. Let's say short answer plus multiple choice. which is actually how I give most of my exams. My regular class exams, except for the final, are partially short answer and partially multiple choice. And so my thought is, of course, you would want to deal with the multiple choice as you do in the standardized moment, but the way you approach this is a, actually a little bit different because short answer almost always count for more than the multiple choice do. And because of that particular little issue right there, the fact that the short answer count for more means you should start here. And not only that, for short answer, you should put something down for every question. Just put something down. Even if you have no idea what the question is asking, you should be putting down, I'm not sure what this question is asking but I do know these things that I think might be related to it. That's how you approach short answer, guys. You need to put down something because if you lay out, if you put down nothing, we can give you no credit. But if you put down something, something might apply and we might be able to give you some credit because in the midst of these counting more, these short answer, they also are almost always partial credit. And if they're partial credit, that means we can give you some of the points for answering it partially right. Okay? Multiple choice recognize as well that short answer you cannot guess on, but multiple choice you can. And because of that, these should be left to the end of the test. Right? These should be done after the short answer. Now, in terms of thinking about the short answer, answer piece, if you know you just, you have three short answer problems and 20 multiple choice, and you look briefly through the multiple choice as you're beginning the exam before you get to the short answer, and you're just seeing a lot of multiple choice that you know you can get, and you have one out of the three short answer that you absolutely Ha absolutely have no clue about. Then answer the other two short answer, be systematic about it, answer the other two short answer, go back and answer the multiple choice, and then put down some information on the last short answer that you hope will apply. That's kind of how you approach it, okay? So it's a matter of looking at the test, being comfortable enough with your knowledge and with your ability to do this test that you can say, I know how to approach a test. Even if I don't know all of the information, I have some kind of idea about what's going on. Okay, so having said that, what if you have essays? Plus short answer, plus multiple choice, right? We have something that's all of them added together. Well, the idea here is that usually the multiple choice are up front. Usually the structure of the test is exactly opposite of the way I've written it here. 
because what I'm writing here is the priority order of how you should probably take it. Because if short answers count for more than multiple choice, then essays usually count for more than the short answer do. So you want to look at the essays first. You want to say, OK, can I get these essays? Can I do these essays? If you can do the essays, that's great. You might want to put some information down. Remember, this is a partial credit deal. So put down some pieces that you definitely know that might apply to that and put it in the essay type form of whatever they're asking for. And then the short answer, you're going to have you, you can answer the short answer because those probably count the next most, right? So the, if essays count for the most points each, short answers probably count for a fair number of points each comparatively to the multiple choice. And the multiple choice can be guessed. That's how you do this. So in general, the idea here is when you start to put in mixed exams, you're going to approach your exam differently than we did the standardized exam. The standardized exam assumed that all answers counted for the same amount of credit. Regular exams are not necessarily that way. And so you have to be very systematic about the way that you think about what counts for uh, what point count totals you have for each of these questions. Okay, short answer usually counts more than multiple choice, so therefore you should answer it first. If you have essays, those usually count more than short answer, and so therefore you should answer those first as best you can and, and as quickly you, as you can, knowing that you need to go back and do the other parts as well. All right, that's until next time. I bid you adieu. <laughs>